Hey everybody, it's Coach Jan, and I am in Beverly Hills, at a park in Beverly Hills that I've never been to, honestly, and I'm happy to be here for the first time. And recording this uh, Justice for Hires, Tai Chi to the people, we've been off for a few weeks, um, but we are back, and I want to connect the two communities because my Tai Chi community on my uh, Tai Chi YouTube channel has been really, really active, and thanks everybody for the great comments, and I have gotten a lot of requests for Yang style uh, Ne Gong, uh, so we're going to do some of that today. And uh, for all the folks on the Justice for Hire community, all the new uh, folks that have joined, thank you. That's awesome. And to connect you to communities, uh, Justice for Hire is a show that I'm producing that anybody can join the cast right from their phone, right from justiceforhire.app. And you can create your own character and uh, essentially shoot your own scenes as that character in a shared cinematic universe, which is an, our app. Uh, it's the first show from our, my production company uh, slash uh, studio. It's a startup. And it's called Real World. And we are the world's first social film studio, meaning that we're a social network meets a film and TV studio. So um, I am on a tour right now, driving around LA, passing out flyers for Justice for Hire and for Real World, uh, because not only do we want more cast members, but we want people to know they can own part of our company on wefunder.com slash real world. That's wefunder.com slash real world. So, uh, that's R E E L W U R L D. So, uh, this is uh, uh, obviously a major component of my daily experience, and uh, you know, just being able to share Tai Chi within this experience is a big deal for me. And thank you, everybody, for watching. So, uh, I've been asked several times to do a Yang style, uh, a more detailed Yang style video. Uh, of the, the when I say Yang style, I mean the Ne Gong, the Yang Ne Gong. There's Yin Ne Gong, Yang Ne Gong. Um, and the yin I teach is from, and both of them are from the Wu style of Tai Chi. And uh, I'm going to share in order the, uh, uh, these exercises, but there's one in particular. And, and maybe, maybe today I, I'm on the fence with doing the first exercise versus doing this one exercise that I think is one of the most powerful exercises. I'm going to lean with this one. I'm going to go with sleeping tiger rolls over. And I've done some videos before uh, that have touched on this idea but I want to really share Sleeping Tiger Rolls Over. And I want to find a great position for this camera because I'm in this park that I've never been to before. Um, and there's a position right there. So Sleeping Tiger Rolls Over is amazing for the waist. As a matter of fact, uh, waist power, it's very, very, it's very important to understand the difference. Tai Chi to me is, is all about um, <clears throat> the difference between waist power and hip power because Tai Chi is all about integration. But to integrate, sometimes you have to isolate first. So you, you integrate and then you isolate. And uh, this exercise really helps, uh, is, a, is an integration exercise, utilizing the waist and the hips. So we'll let Adam in here. And so uh, move over to Adam. What's going on, Adam? Good to see you. Uh, so we are going to do sleeping tiger rolls over today. A lot of people have been requesting Yang style uh, uh, Ne Gong. And Sleeping Tiger Rolls Over is a later part of the set. Uh, and I'll shoot a more detailed video of this when I do them all in order. But I want to share this one today because I was doing it this morning. And I <clears throat> made a commitment to myself recently to, um, to keep doing this exercise daily because it's, it really is the, the greatest waist exercise that I've, I've ever encountered uh, in terms of push hand strength, which means grappling strength. Uh, for, for those who are, are, are grapplers um, in stand up, uh, being able to manipulate the weight of your opponent uh, with ease, especially minimizing the tension in the arms and in the fingertips. So if you have the, the waist and the hips coordinated, backing up your, your arm strength, et cetera, then you're gonna have to, you'll be able to utilize less of, of arm strength to accomplish your goal of placing your opponent where you want. So here in Beverly Hills Park, Right now, uh, we're gonna do this exercise. Let me find this little camera position, see how this works for you guys. I'm gonna make myself, that looks good? Okay, great. I got a, so, I got a request, Jen. All right, so how is the, um, the, the audio? Audio is good, okay, great. Can you hear so, me? All right, so if everything's great, that, that, thank you for, for, for quality assurance over here, Adam. So I'll say that, that this exercise 
so so important to see that. There we go. Great. All right. Wonderful. So Sleeping Tiger rolls over from the young uh, the Wu style of Tai Chi. It's going to have with it an A frame. So you're going to have your A frame straight line from the back heel to the top of the head. And the nose over the knee, the knee over the big toe. I will stand with both feet shoulder width apart and parallel. And normally we do our uplifting heaven exercise and, and all of our warm ups, but today I want to be a little more uh, to the point of this particular exercise. You'll note that when you're in this position, and some of you Wu stylists may have uh, encountered this, I was originally taught the Wu style with hips and shoulders square forward. And that doesn't mean straight, that means whatever my forward is, hips and shoulders are square. I do not do that anymore. In fact, I, uh, and I haven't done it for years because maintaining the square posture here causes uh, tension right in the groin on the lead leg side. So when you open up the hip, you'll feel that, that bit of tension right here. And you really instead want to soften into that front leg. And the reason I'm saying this is because of grappling and because of push hands. <laughs> and uh, I'll say, let, let me leave, leave that again. I'll say uh, push hands and then grappling. Because if you can do, be strong in push hands, you're going to be stronger in grappling. So, and just because you're strong in grappling does not necessarily mean you're strong in push hands. So let's leave with the push hands concept. Softening the back hip into the front groin. Soften, let that hip fall in. Notice that it winds up the body naturally. So you have this natural spring and you can spring out of it. If you hold here, square forward, it'll, it'll essentially cause, uh, unless you're doing it intentionally, uh, it could definitely cause uh, tension that is that you may not be conscious of. And so I highly recommend softening. And that'll help you with the nose over the knee, the knee over the big toe. Without that, notice that it pulls your head away from that line, that toe knee nose line. I'll come a little closer. Nose, toe knee nose. And, Adam, how is the shadow? I see some shadow on me, so I'm wondering if I'm in the best light for this. Here, I'll just slide it over just a little bit so you guys get it. There we go, look at that. That looks like it's a little bit better. Great. So, Tony knows. Tony knows. Uh, with that said, we're going to put one hand up and straight. The, whatever hand is back, it doesn't matter really which one you, you start with, but let's do the, whatever leg is back, we'll put that hand forward. One hand forward. Remember, I have scar tissue on my wrists, for those of you that train with me regularly, so I can't turn my palms all the way up uh, on either hand. So note that this exercise is going to have the palms up for me. Uh, sorry, we got getting a call coming in, and I'm going to stop this. All right, hold on one second. Stop it now. Yeah, I don't have a block call from this right now. All right, there we go. Back to it. Okay. One, two, three. One hand out. Back hand out. Other hand to the side, 90 degrees. And with this exercise, you're going to keep whatever arm is out on the side. It's only going to come down and forward to replace the other one. You may see people doing this exercise, swinging the arms, but it has to be led by the breath, activating the waist. So the palm to the side is going to have the palm downward, special attention to the middle finger of that hand. The one that's forward, palm up, special attention to the middle finger. Your nose and the finger are on one line. So your nose is just as high, your finger is just as high as the nose. And you're gonna cover, and we're gonna do the, there are five variations that I do of this exercise. We're gonna do the first variation. The first variation is going to have a very small movement with the hand. And you'll see how that manifests here. A gentle sliding Get into the sun, get you a little more detail here. Notice how the side hand's coming down 
and scooping up with the power of the hip. Notice I'm digging my hip forward to help catalyze the hand coming up. I'm, the hip is whipping the waist. The waist is coming up and I'm reaching with the fingertips. Not so much that my hand or my arm straightens. My arm never locks. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching through the curve. I talk about this a lot, but these, these gentle, natural curves that we have when we do our postures, extending all the way through them and for whatever shape you have. So that means if you have a very small shape, you can still reach through the curve. Here's Tai Chi reverse breathing, reaching through the curve. This is a very strong posture and I'm reaching. These fingers are reaching, these fingers are reaching and I'm extending, my elbows extending out. My shoulder blades are extending into the back opening up. So when you're longer, it's the same idea. So I'm extending, reaching through the curve, reaching out here, reaching more so emphasizing the finger that I'm looking at. And then I'm going to cover. The breath, I normally give one breath per movement. So I inhale, draw the color in. Exhale, push the color out, meaning that I'm visualizing my breath as a color as I'm inhaling into the lower Dan Tian, which is three finger lengths below the belly button. I'm using my belly to breathe, pulling the oxygen in, and giving that sensation of visualization that I keep, keep that visualization going with my eyes open. I map it into my own body. And then I exhale, push it through my arms like a hose. Right here. So again, this small, I want to give you a little detail here. This small movement right here is coming from the waist. From extension, room, coming down. I'm doing only one arm right now. So that same, imagine this arm, this is to the side. Now it's going to come up and it scoops, it scoops, and then room. Very small, just the palm goes up, scooping up palm scooping down and then the hand relaxes and goes to the side. This would be considered the yin, ha, the yin hand. And the yang hand is the extended hand. The extended fingertips are the activated fingertips. So the softened hand is the outside hand. Inhale, activate through the, and exhale out. And I'm gonna put this over here. Let's see if I can get you. Okay, it seems like Adam is actually getting getting it, which is phenomenal, uh, which means that you guys can actually see. <laughs> Still concerned about that. All right, so for, we, we'll switch legs now. And normally with these variations, this is my thing about variations. When you have variations of a particular move, the way I learned these moves was one variation at a time over the course of several months or years. So I spent a lot of time getting really comfortable with one particular movement. And then if I were to switch, uh, when I switch that movement uh, uh, in any particular way, then that becomes the, um, it becomes a new challenge to find the variation in my own body and to make it my own. So I say that just as a, uh, as a means to, to put that up a little bit more. There we go. I say that as a means to help guide this, this process. This is the singular one. Let's switch legs. Very small circle. This small circle was not the first one I learned, but it's the first one I do in the morning when I start doing this set. I'll do it from the front. Notice that it's coming out to the side. And once again, the coordination, hip, waist, hand. Starting with the breath, catalyzes the chain of hip, waist, hand. So I exhale, hip, waist, hand. And when I say hip, waist, hand, I only mean for the hand that's coming from the side to up. The other hand, the one that's out front has its own chain reaction that is happening simultaneously. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> these, these chain reactions, which are essentially uh, attention circuits. Uh, and when I say attention circuits, 
I mean that you are creating a circuit uh, with your attention and allowing each your attention to move in a specific order, catalyzed by the breath. And eventually you take out the breath and you just do it with willpower. So it's really, really important to have the hierarchy, the order in place, and that hip waist fingertip is happening here on the side, yin hand. Hip waist fingertip coming up. And notice that the finger here is leading. The finger here is leading the, the motion and then scooping up and forward. Scooping up and forward for the reach. Now, let's talk about the other hand. So this other hand has the pretty much opposite chain reaction. The opposite chain reaction here is inhaling and scooping in or exhaling and, and pushing out either whichever breath you're on through the hand. So if I'm exhaling, I'm pushing breath color visualization through the hand that's going down as I'm scooping up with the other one. If I'm inhaling, I'm pulling the color visualization in while I'm pushing it out the other hand. And you have to prioritize based on your own experience and your own desire, which one you're emphasizing. Um, and I, I do recommend emphasizing the lead hand the most uh, and sometimes even switching the attention circuit, uh, the emphasis, the attention circuit midway. So I'll be more specific of what I mean by that. So attention over here, waist, fingers, inhaling, pulling in. And I'm emphasizing that. And now I'm exhaling, pushing out that right hand. And now I switch right here, switching the attention to the lead hand. And sometimes I'll even split the attention, meaning inhaling through both fingertips, exhaling through both fingertips, inhaling through both fingertips, exhaling through both fingertips. And we're gonna focus on this variation today, but I am gonna show you the other variations right now. So the other variations are, we, this is the, we already did one, so two is using the elbow. And notice that the elbow is waving, waving. And it's cover, cover scooping up cover scooping up, cover scooping up. I'm gonna try this one. over here as another potentially better version of this. Cover scooping up. Notice that my head stays still, meaning toe, knee, nose, straight line from the back heel to the top of the head switching legs. So the next variation is going to loosen, or should I say connect the head to the rest of the movement. Now the head is moving and the body is swinging even more. So this is variation three. Variation four is to make an overemphasis of the waist movement. Notice now I'm big, making these big, big loops from the side. Big, big movements with the waist here. Much bigger than the others. And variation five is reverse breathing Tai Chi. So this is not in the traditional Yang Mei Gong set. I've added this because the mechanic is so important uh, for being able to maintain your balance while moving an opponent off of their route. So here, now we take the same concept and we soften the hand downward. Straight line from the back of the heel to the top. And when you exhale, soften, inhale, pulling in. Fingertips up, 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 up. And now these fingertips in the back are reaching down, boom, right here. Exhale, soften, 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 soften. Notice that my knee is starting to bend. Inhale, I straighten that back leg, straighten up. These fingers, my lead fingers, index, middle finger, thumb, are reaching and spinning, spiraling up. Index, middle finger, thumb of the back hands are reaching down. They're reaching down as if I'm gonna grab like a pistol. 
So reaching down, but the emphasis is on the upper hand. This is a much softer intention with the downward hands. And once you create that shape, you soften it out, exhaling down, inhaling up, really reaching through the curve of the lead hand, opening up the shoulder blades, opening up the hip and the waist turns, exhale down. Inhaling up, 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 exhale down. Inhaling up, exhale down. Inhaling up, exhale down. Very, very soft. But you should feel the stretch and the stretch again is reaching through the curve. I'm not stretching my arms out. I'm not locking myself trying to stretch and reach. I'm maintaining the shape and seeing how far I can go. And I'm moving my mind through the body saying, okay, shoulder blade can go in more. Shoulder itself extends. Elbow pushes forward more. Wrist, fingers jumping out of the wrist. When I say fingers jumping out of the wrist, Adam knows this very, very well from one of his very accomplished teachers, the fingers jumping out of the wrist, but not so much that all the hands are stretching and all the fingers are stretching in all directions, just index, middle finger and thumb, reaching and spinning, jumping out. So all of those little details are happening right here. And when you're playing with an opponent, we'll get back to variation one in a moment, but when you're playing with an opponent and let's say you both have uh, right leg forward and you're spinning up and you're pushing on their left shoulder uh, with your right hand, you have your other hand here, boom. You have your hand on their wrist, you're spinning up their shoulder and they're spinning on that back leg or potentially you're, they're trying to come into the front leg, you open up your back leg and turn them off. So this is a very common position and it's not talked about a lot um, because it's so common. <laughs> so it's one of those things where, where um, these, these exercises and the variations, e each one of them helps you uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually go through each one of them quickly again, um, just to talk about, in my experience, uh, what it's helped me with so that you guys can contemplate and ideate around that. Um, and I'm sure uh, those who are, are, are more familiar with this have their own, uh, their own stories and experiences about it. So this one, the first variation coming up, that small circle on the hands, small circle right here on the food. And it's still happening in the hip. It's still, look at my hip, my waist. Obviously I'm bending for the camera, but this is still an example. No matter what my posture is, the mechanics all work together in a similar way. So here, so. So I find these to be super helpful with the very subtle pulls. If I'm snatching a hand down or I'm, I, I do a, in, in Tai Chi, they would call it Lu, where you're, where you're pulling down and, um, but essentially sticking to the opponent and sucking them in uh, with a drop of your weight coordinated with their pressure. So their pressure comes in, I'm sucking that pressure down. So here, whoop, sucking it down, moving to the side. That's variation one. It's very effective in that. To make that a uh, really practical example, just gentle movements of, of my hands, circles on the hands, coordinated with my waist on someone else's arm. That's what I mean by that. It's variation two, when we start to add the forearm. Forearm, this is fairly obvious as well. So you're here, you might be playing with somebody, in my experience, being able to just use the forearms to pummel in, to move someone, to, to connect my forearm to their forearm or, their, or the pocket of their elbow and to move them out of the way. Um, and also just generally blocking. <laughs> blocking and, and redirecting pressure with the greater surface area of the forearm, this exercise is really, really helpful. Again, when I bend for the camera, that does not negate the mechanics. So the mechanics, regardless if I do it in this particular posture or not, are still the mechanics and they're applicable and they're very flexible in how they're applied. So, boom. Variation three, adding the head, really just starts to give the, uh, I, I, what I would call a realistic a more realistic, um, uh, a more realistic uh, full body penetration when it comes to uh, your opponent's guard. So if I'm taking the back, meaning I'm doing an arm drag and I'm coming around, or I'm grappling with somebody and they grab my head and I have to drop my body weight and step through, look up and look around 
and put my head on their body. These exercises, first staying very disciplined with the head straight and then relaxing and connecting the head to the rest of the body. This very much helps in those moments for me in, in wrestling um, when, I'm, when I have to use the full body power with my head to move an opponent. Uh, additionally, it's very, very helpful when I'm maintaining my balance as a counter uh, to counter someone's pressure. So if I'm pushing and I, I reach through here, uh, at times, depending on the situation, my head positioning is really going to make or break the, my balance. So sometimes I have to be like this, sometimes I have to be like this. So uh, just being able to be flexible and comfortable in both scenarios where I'm uh, responding to someone's pressure and ideally taking it and, and making something great out of it and getting the point or, or making them move and keeping my ground, this exercise, is, uh, this variation number three is very, very helpful for that. Uh, and especially if doing, if you're doing more uh, traditional push hands drills, meaning the the two push, anyway, even the one push, uh, the one push, two push, like multi push drills that, that can be organized into dalu, etc. Uh, these exercises, moving the head and the body at the same time, are very helpful for calm, flexibility, etc. Variation, uh, so one, two. Three. Yeah, the variation four, where you really whip the, the waist even more, again, just kind of doubles down on that, but it also helps with the flexibility, meaning the strength that it takes to really move an opponent and to throw them uh, around you. And when I say throw, I don't necessarily mean grab. I mean to redirect their pressure on very precise, sharp angles requires you, without moving your feet, or without stepping and lifting your foot requires you to have an immense amount of flexibility and control in the waist. And that's not me saying that I am the most, um, uh, I have the most flexible waist by any means. I have an, an incredibly strong waist with, with uh, a great amount of control with the, within the flexibility, within the range that I have. So I have a particular range that I do not consider super flexible, but I have a lot of strength and a lot of control in the range that I do have. And that to me is one of the, the greatest gifts that Tai Chi has given me is the understanding that it doesn't matter how overtly flexible you are in any particular move, it really matters more so about how much control uh, and, and uh, how much control you have over yourself and, and, and the outcomes that you want with your body, or with the mind, et cetera. So being able to, to work with what you, what you have in an optimized way, whatever it is that you have, is one of the greatest gifts of Tai Chi. So this exercise, making it really overt, is just you training yourself to be more flexible with whatever you got. And then when you have to do bigger moves, like take somebody from one side and move them all the way around to the other side. Notice where I'm pointing. When you have to do those big types of throws where uh, by, by nature of you repositioning somebody for so long, eventually they lose their footing. And when they lose their footing, that's when they go down. So that's one of the coolest things about push hands to me is that you're really, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's magical. I mean, it's, there's no magic to it at all. There's zero magic to it, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it looks so magical and it feels so delightful uh, because of, of your flexibility control and your precision. So again, if you were taking an opponent from one direction to the other, notice that I pivot my back heel, I open up, pivot my now my other back heel and I go all the way around. That's just one example of a move that this that this waist movement helps a lot with. Now let's talk about this one again. Number five, inhaling up, exhaling down, inhaling up. I'm just gonna do this a little bit more, get into the reverse breathing mechanics. The reverse breathing mechanics are going to sleep and waking up. So that's one key component to the reverse breathing mechanics. Inhaling, waking up energizing the fingertips, exhaling down, going to sleep. Inhaling, waking up, energizing the fingertips, exhaling, dropping down, going to sleep. Inhaling, waking up. So that, that wake up, go to sleep, that should feel like you're taking a, a, a sheet, your sheet on your bed, and you're just giving it a little whip so you can get any, you know, maybe you ate some crackers in bed, you have some crumbs, <laughs> and you're doing this, 
waking up, going to sleep, waking up, going to sleep, that rhythm. And I'm going to make some more videos talking about rhythm um, and timing in Tai Chi. Uh, Cause it's really not talked about a lot at all. Um, but that rhythm is something that you want to have control over for yourself, uh, which makes you incredibly strong that like knowing that rhythm of when to go to sleep, when to bring your weight down, when to bring your weight into an opponent and fall asleep into the opponent and when to wake up on the opponent. These things are essentially create the perception of weight and it makes the opponent uh, feel like you are heavier than you actually are. And that's one of the most amazing things. So uh, I cannot emphasize shifting your breathing pattern for this final variation. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Again, I'll make more detailed videos on this in the future. And going right back to this first one we were talking about. Reaching out through the fingertips, down. Being very disciplined. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Remember that back hip, reaching, reaching, reaching. Exhale. The front hip turning, reaching. Notice on the side, my back hip is turning. My front hip is turning. And to be clear, you don't need to overemphasize it. I might have overemphasized it a little bit here. You don't really need to do that. That's completely unnecessary. So what you really want to do is get that pop. And the pop, I say the pop because even done slowly, it is explosive. So done slowly, these things are still explosive. And it's really important to, to uh, allow yourself to feel the explosiveness in the slow movement, like a slow motion explosion. Because when you can perceive it as that, when you move faster or even if you maintain that slower speed with a, uh, with a partner doing push hands, they're going to feel that explosion. And they will likely react, uh, if they're, if, especially if, they're not, if they have less experience, they will likely react with sudden jolts of readjusting their posture. And those sudden jolts create the breaks in their form and their structure that allow you to insert the rest of your strategy. So really, really important stuff, timing, rhythm, strategy, the explosiveness of even the slow movements. So here, reaching up. And if you ever perceive something to be fast, like for example, right now, I have to slow myself down for my fingertips right here. My fingers are moving too fast for me. And when I say too fast for me, I mean that I'm not perceiving the pulling of the breath in through the fingers. So now I'm starting to slow it down. And I have to work on my right hand a little more. My left hand is slower. My right hand is faster. So I have to still work on my right hand. And so it, and this is subtle. This is really subtle. So I'm going to do my best to to do it right here with you guys. My left hand, look at that, that particular detail. So I have tension, so I'm, I'm, I'm gauging myself right now. I have tension on the bottom, I'm reading my, my hand, I have tension on the bottom um, uh, near my pinky, the bottom of, the, of the, the, the blade of the hand. So I have to soften, there we go. I have to soften there, so that means I have to go into my muscles. I have to bring my attention into the muscles. I have to start slowing it down. And if there's too much tension, I have to be, if it's woven, the tension's woven together like these sticks, I have to start pulling the muscle fibers with my mind. I literally have to use my mind, visualize the fibers or the tension as, as, as structured net. This is my process. And I start to unravel those knots or pull apart those little, the, those crossing uh, 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 tense tendons and muscles and I start to align them. And when I align them, then I can feel the circulation more. And when I can feel the circulation, I get more data. And when I get more data, I can slow down even more 
and perceive more, and then I can utilize all that information later. And every little adjustment that I start to make still requires me to do the same process over and over again. So as I stood up, I started adding my hips again to emphasize that, that dynamism between the fingertips and the hips that are again catalyzed by the breath work. So I just got my left hand back, but now my right hand still has that tension. So I have to reevaluate myself. And this is part of why Tai Chi to me is so cool because you have to do it. You're gonna, <laughs> you have to do the work and it can be really fun finding it in yourself and readjusting. Switching legs. Again, straight line from the back heel to the top of the head, your A-frame, nose, knee, toe. Obviously, I don't have no knee, nose, knee, toe right now. Look at how my knee is not over my toe. So I soften and I go a little bit forward, but not so much to go past the knee, which puts undue pressure onto the kneecap. So I keep it, I stop right at the knee, right at the, the toe, and then I soften that back hip into that front groin. And then I have my nice A-frame. I'm just gonna wear my hat. <laughs> and reaching out to the side. Notice that my hand doesn't go past my hip. My, my side arm does not go past my hip. It stays on an imaginary line painted across the hips. If my hips were square, I'd keep that line side to side and I would not go past it. It's not to say that it's a bad thing to go past it. This is just part of the discipline of this particular movement. Otherwise, you might get this kind of thing. And I've seen people doing this in the parks, this exercise, and you know, it feels nice, but we are, we control the, the parameters that we set for ourselves. So when you set the parameters in this exercise or any exercise, you want to stick to those per parameters for the reasons that you've, you've contemplated that hopefully you've tested in real, with real training, meaning uh, with another person who is not agreeable um, to see that does this stuff work, does it not work. So I can testify that this 100% this exercise is absolutely phenomenal. And I find this scooping right here uh, to be great for uh, underhooks, meaning like I'm throwing a hook here, like I'm throwing a, an uppercut or a hook to the body. Um, but when someone puts the underhook on you, you underhook their arm. And that uh, is essentially a defense. It's offense as defense. Uh, so it gets them to oftentimes pull, try to pull their arm out because it, uh, you can put some pressure on their shoulder. As I said, you can't do it back here, but it's a different momentum. So here you go, I keep this momentum just from the side and up, side and up. Deep and just stretch that out for a second. Stretch that out, reaching over and up. Exhaling down. Looks like we're doing some embodiment stuff. You just really feel, <laughs> just feel yourself. I have so many friends that do that, that kind of stuff. It's great. It's actually awesome. Um, I do not do that as much, but sometimes I need a little embodiment break. So, uh, and I'm just checking the time here. What time? Okay, great. So uh, that is that. T today, that is uh, what I think is, is probably the most valuable thing. And, and Adam, if you have any questions, I'm happy to dive deeper um, for the next few minutes on, uh, on, on any questions regarding this, this exercise. Uh, and while, if, 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 you're, uh, if you have any questions, Charles, everybody should stretch while, you're, while Adam's talking. <laughs> hello, hello, check, check. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, I notice how, okay, so so I'm getting into the A-frame, knee to the toes, to like just to the point where I can see the tip of my toes, knees hit that, and my nose, and that's how I know my nose is there. I've got that straight line from the back of, so like if I'm tired, of turn sideways, right, foot, knee to the toes, 
nose to the knee, drop in and, uh, and head up, and I've got that straight line. And then back leg, arm up to the right. And then I can feel how when I come up here and out, right, I've got something coming across here. So what, what, two, two notes there. One, um, the chin should be tucked slightly like a boxer. Chin, chin tuck, got it. Yeah, yeah it, it, very similar to boxing. And the head up, up is now relative to your, to your back heel. So the straight line from the back heel to the top of the head, that, that diagonal line is now your up. And your middle finger of your lead hand is going to be uh, no higher than your nose. Yeah, the nose line. And the palm, or should I say the elbow, uh, should be below the shoulder. And meaning that the, if you soften your, your extended arm's elbow slightly to create a more rounded, uh, yeah, the, your, your side arm is fantastic. The lead oh. arm, softening it a little bit to bring it slightly down. So if you're here, softening it a little bit downward, because this is going to be the most, uh, I mean, this is part of reaching through the curve but it's also going to be the most martial uh, for you. Uh, meaning that when you play with any particular partner or opponent, um, it's going to be more challenging for them to do damage to the, to that, uh, that joint. And so, and so when I, so when I've got it right, when I feel it, right, I get this movement at the bottom of my ribs that is very foreign. And I know I'm working muscles that I, that I don't usually get to the bottom of the float, like by the floating ribs. And it feels really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So, the, I mean, that's the, essentially the obliques all the way around the, the muscles wrapping around the waist. It just works all of them and, and also massages the, the uh, intestines and organs in a beautiful way. So you really get a lot of, of uh, and, and while we're talking, I highly recommend just stretch going into any stretch that you can uh, right now. I'm just sp spreading my legs apart and, and reaching with the with the arms, um, I, I, I for everybody that watches this, I can't stress enough that if you don't stretch after you train, then you haven't finished training. So you have to do the stretching. <laughs> it's just it's just part of the longevity practice. Um, but yeah, man, I mean that that's great that you're that you're feeling that, and um, and like I said, I mean I'm doing it at this point. You know, I, I have to be so um, so precise with my 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 time. And I know that this exercise gives me more than, than any other waist movement exercise. Um, and, you know, when I really want to, like the grappling belly, the grappling uh, muscles are different than the calisthenic, you know, um, or, or if I'm attempting to sculpt, I'll do more like sit-ups and I'll do more, et cetera. Um, and sit-ups are totally wonderful and helpful. But uh, oftentimes I will emphasize uh, if I really need the strength, I will emphasize this. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it, doing it at least even every other day, uh, it, it can be massively valuable. So I, I can't stress that enough. And let's, let's finish up with our, uh, with our usual, our usual routine. There we go. I'll jump in the sun for you guys. Potential. Potential sun damage, hopefully not. <laughs> All right, so feet two fists apart, soften the hands, and inhaling, breath lifts the wrist. Fingers reach to the back, chest to the sky, hips forward, in on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers forward, reaching, pushing the color through the hands, keeping the legs straight, as straight as possible. If that means you can't go that far down, that's okay, but keep the legs straight. And if you can't go far, that's great. And touch the toes to the ground and then soften the knees. Exhaling, like you're going to sleep, that same mechanic. Slowly see that same more. Inhale, breath lifts the wrist. The wrists lift the body, breath lifts the wrist. Like your backs of your fingertips are gliding on your heart. Reach to the back. Energize the fingertips as you enter. Then you draw more breath in. Reach to the ceiling, to the sky. Reach the hips. Forward, the weight on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Pushing the color through the hands. Soften the knees. Inhale, up. And a nice Shaolin stretch. One foot forward. Exhale.
exhale, pushing the breath through. Fingertips, touch the toe, inhaling up. Switch legs, exhaling down. Stretch, inhaling up. And we're gonna switch 45 degrees, exhaling down, inhaling up. Switch legs, 45 degrees, exhaling down, inhaling up. Switch legs, 90 degrees, exhaling down. Inhaling up, switch legs, another 90, exhaling down. Inhaling up, going onto the toes and exhale, wash the breath as a color, like white light down the legs. Inhaling up, turn to the right, exhale, wash the breath down. Inhaling up, turn to the left, exhale, wash down. Inhaling up, bring the color visualization over the head, behind the back and exhale, wash it down. Now. The very least, you are scanning your body with the attention. The very least. So this is an exercise that everyone should do. And then tapping up. And I say that specifically, slap the inside and slap outside. Switch arms, slap the inside of the arm, outside. Then over the shoulders, down the back, slap it. I say at the very least because there are people that don't believe in chi. They don't believe in you know, a lot of these exercises and ideas. Um, and that's okay. You don't need to believe to, to gain benefit. And so uh, and that's part of the reason I don't talk too much about chi. I, I really want anybody and everybody to be able to get the benefit. And you're going to discover whatever you're ready to discover. That's not on me. So, <laughs> but what it is on me is to build bridges to the excellence that anybody can have by slowing down, slowing themselves down and speeding up their perception and getting more data on themselves and their environment so they can make better, more informed decisions. So that's what I'm, I, I do my best to emphasize here. And I like to close that out with utilizing just the fingertips, meaning the fingertips themselves, not the hand, not the, the, the knuckles, but simply the specific fingertips. We're gonna do what's called ocean of blood returns to its source. We do this a lot. We do this at the end of, of all of our training sessions. We're gonna inhale and only lift the fingertips like they're Climbing ropes or sucking in with air. And exhale, only the fingertips are lowered. Three more. Do your best to soften the elbows and shoulders. So only the fingertips have the attention. They're being lifted up. And one more. And rub the hands together, flick the fingers out, thumbs, one, two, three, grab, one, two, three, press and hold, and drill, press around the palm, second circle, third circle, the largest, and then top and bottom, and sides, massage the top and bottom of the fingers, and the sides. The fingers receiving, let the squeezing fingers fall into the receiving fingers, natural grooves, and you'll find these wonderful pressure points. And then one more. Other side, press and hold, and drill, tap, and circles, second circle wider, third circle, the widest on the palm top and bottom, and side, the size fingers. So it's the top and bottom all the way down to the fingernail and the sides. Top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, and sides. sides. And finally, you can do this standing or sitting. Middle pillar breathing. And we'll inhale, draw the white light into the belly. It's the sound spreads the whole body. Oh. Inhale, white light up the front of the body. Like a tidal wave, exhale, roll it down the back. Like a water flow. Oh. A white light up the left side. 
Exhale, roll it down the right side. Oh. Inhale, right leg to the belly. Exhale, push it down into the ground. Let it come back up and around like a fountain in reverse, making a big bubble around. You want to use this sound, your sensitivity, the vibration to expand your awareness, your attention as far as you can go. So inhale, white line to the belly. Exhale, push the color and the sound to the top of the head. Feel the vibration spread out around you, whether you're paying attention to the sound waves or to the visualization itself. Then spread your attention in all directions, fill your entire surroundings with white light, like a bubble around you. Uh... Have gratitude for the body, the good people in your life, the space that you're in. And thank you guys so much, as usual. And everyone knows this is Justice for Hire's Tai Chi to the People. So you can join the cast of Justice for Hire from justiceforhire.app. Be part of a movie, show, cinematic universe that we are building, producing as a community worldwide. Fun stuff. Uh, you can invest in the company producing it. My startup company, film technology startup called Real World, R E E L W U R L D. At because you're in it and that's on wefunder.com anybody can uh wefunder.com slash real world and anybody can own a part of the company and help us build this future of film and television and of course you can find me uh jen jan at jan's tai chi coach jan and uh you can check out my coach jan's patreon that's patreon slash.com slash uh, jan's tai chi and uh why i got my first subscriber uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> so, fun times uh but that's uh shout out to sam uh, who's helping to make uh, uh, these great Tai Chi videos, which I have coming out daily. So um, lots of love there to everybody. And thank you to Adam, who came and uh, always adds value by his presence. Wonderful human. Thank you so much, Jen. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, thank you, man. Love you all. I'll see you guys later. Have a great night. Cheers.